I love it. I love it. I don't know what's going on, but that's good. I'm here. <laughs> Let's all stand and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I, I, I felt that. I'm walking. Boom. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Come on, someone shout it out. God bless you, mothers. Happy Mother's Day. We love you today. And you know, we, we want to honor those fathers, too, in the next month. So mothers, y'all better have something special for us. I'm just throwing that out there. Hey, man. But we, <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Marilyn. But God bless you. But God is good, is he not? And mothers, you look beautiful today. Look at your day. Give yourselves a hand again. Thank the Lord. But the Lord is good and his mercy endure it forever. And today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, I want to talk to you about the gift of a mother. The gift of a mother leaving a legacy of faith. If everyone would get their Bibles out and your iPad and your phones, and I want to welcome again all of the visitors, all of you visiting online at Highland Christian Center, type in VIP. We want to reach out to you. And I want to thank all of our visitors in here one more time. Let's give them a hand. You know, God is blessing us. And last week, we had a state representative in the house, John. I introduced him. And today, I have a special friend in here, uh, Dr. Eric Joseph from Multnomah, the president of Multnomah. Can you just raise your hand, Doc? God bless you. Thank you. We welcome you today. We welcome all of our first-time visitors online and here, and we would love to meet with you immediately following service. All right, if you would open your Bibles to 2 Timothy, let me make sure I got this right, 2 Timothy 1 and 5. It's just a, a, a simple verse, 2 Timothy 1 and 5. It says, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Amen. May a blessing be added to the reading, the hearing, and especially the doing of God's word. I love what that scripture says because it's very simple. It says, I am reminded of your sincere faith. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the sincere faith that is passed through generations with faithful mothers. Let's go to the Lord and ask for his blessings upon this word. Father, we thank you right now. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. And Lord, as we go into your word right now, we ask that you would have your way, that you would speak a fresh word, a fresh anointing upon this place. Father, that you would bless every hearer of the word, that you would encourage especially the mothers today, that you would bless them online and in this place and afar, Lord, and those who couldn't even be with us at this this very hour. You be glorified in all that we do. You be magnified across this land. And Lord, we pray that your word would be quickened as a sword cutting through. Lord, the bone and the marrow that if someone doesn't know you in the pardoning of their sins, that they would say, what must I do? to be saved. We pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the church said, amen and amen. Now give the Lord a big shout of hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Worthy is the lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. 
And so again, we want to thank all of our mothers and all of our visitors, all of our special guests. And whether you had a child biologically adopted, child inherited, child became a foster mother, we honor our mothers today. Thank God for mothers. And I know I miss my mom. But I, I amen, amen. But I want to thank my wife for being a fabulous mother. And again, I give Malin a big shout out. And I want to, I, I just want to say that God is good. And I thank you for your prayers. Um, little Maya, who was shot in the back of her head, she's doing much better today. She's able to walk. I talked to her mother, Juanita, who you saw Madeline and the team praying with and Cynthia. And, and, and she's doing much better today. She's not where she needs to be, but she's not where she was. And she survived. It's a miracle. Come on, give God the praise. Thank you, Jesus. And then I was talking to Pastor Steve. He asked me to pray for his son, Joe, a few weeks ago. Joe was about to have major heart surgery. He's been on medication. Things have been happening. But when Joe went to get his prep for the surgery, the doctors did another scan, which they had done just a few days prior, but they do another scan. And when they did the scan, the MRI revealed something miraculous happened to his heart. His heart no longer needed surgery, and they said there's no need. Come on, give God the praise. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? God is still a miracle worker. God is still a healer. Can I encourage somebody on this Mother's Day? Don't give up on God because he has not given up on you. Don't get discouraged, but be encouraged today. That is still possible. He's still the Lord of Lords. He's still the King of Kings. He is still my healer and my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Ah! Thank you, Jesus. He's a way out of no way. He's a bridge over troubled water. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I know I get excited about miracles. I get excited about blessings. Y'all only get excited if it's about you. But I get excited when God does it for you. Amen, somebody. Oh, God is doing something. But we praise the Lord not only for those praises, but we praise God for Daniel Hardy. The, the, the son of the late great Pastor Hardy, um, our former pastor here, his younger son was drafted to the NFL by the Los Angeles Rams, <laughs> Super Bowl champions. My goodness, that's, that's amazing. I've never gotten to meet Daniel, but he, the, the paper says, the news says, he's six foot three, I believe. 240 pounds? My goodness. <laughs> so we praise the Lord for the Hardy family, and we salute Daniel. Amen? All right. Now, you know, Mother's Day is a special day. But I was reading somewhere, it says, Early on, Adam understood the significance of a mother. One day, Adam and the boys, you know, Cain and Abel, they were out for a walk, and they happened upon the Garden of Eden. They couldn't get there. They could see it from afar. But one of the boys said, Dad, what is that place? And Adam looked at his sons firmly in their eyes, and he says, Guys, that's where your mother ate us out of a house and a home. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. I appreciate that. You, <laughs> Mothers, we love you. <laughs> Adam was right there when Eve ate of the fruit of the tree of good, the knowledge of good and evil. Amen, amen. 
But again, I, I, I just want to say we salute all of our special mothers in here. Um, I, all of you are special, and uh, we, are, we, are, we appreciate each of you. But what is the origin of Mother's Day? It is believed to have originated from the 16th century a Christian practice of visiting one's mother annually. And also, by the time of 1870, uh, activist Julia Ward Howe um, wrote uh, a special proclamation in 1870. And this idea was influenced by Ann Jarvis, and who also was a young homemaker, and so what they begin to do is honor mothers in the early days. And that's called Mother's Work Days. That's what it was called. But when Jarvis died in 1907, her daughter Anna Jarvis started a crusade to form a Memorial Day for women. And she also gave all persons a carnation at funerals, her mom's favorite flower. And see, carnations today still rules the day for Mother's Day. And so in 1914, President Woodrow Wilson declared the first National Mother's Day as a day for American citizens to show the flag in honor of those mothers whose sons had died in war and established the day as a time of public expression of our love and reverence for the mothers of our country. And the rest, they say, is history. Because in 2022, fast forward, Americans will spend this weekend close to a record $28 billion on Mother's Day flowers, spas, gifts, and what have you. And so men, if you are married, and you are you engaged and you haven't taken care of your mother, get going. You still got a few hours. Amen. $28 billion. To you, in a way, we salute all of the mothers online and we're sorry we could not send flowers to you. But Senator Avell Gardley, I know you're watching right now. We're going to be sending some flowers to you. Amen, somebody. And so, so we want to... We want to really understand the importance of mother. So just like I do every year, I want you to take out your phone, which I'm going to do right now, and I want you to open it up, and I want you to send a text to your mother, wherever she's at. If, if, if she's in heaven, then I want you to pray. Amen, like me. But I'm going to send one to my, my, my aunt, Marguerite, in um, New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm going to send her a text message. And just tell her I love you. So go ahead, take out your phones, and I want you to do that for a moment and say thank you, we love you, and we honor you today. Amen? Amen. Tell somebody you love them. Amen. All right. So now, and, 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 and you know, like I told you before, I miss my mom. Mama, I really missed you. You know, and, and so uh, go ahead and show that image of my mom and Madeline, Phyllis Nalen, who was nurturing, she was caring, she set a legacy for me and the family. I can remember my mom protecting me from the wrath of my father when I would do something wrong, and she would always encourage me. And she called me her bunny rabbit because my teeth were bigger than my face. And it took a while for my face to catch up with my teeth. And she would spoil me with gifts. Edwin is not that funny. Calm down. And so, but, but she loved Madeline. And I remember this. When my mom talked to me, she would talk to me almost every day, but it was a brief conversation with me. 
It was, hey, Sean, how are you doing? What y'all doing? Mom, we're good. Had a good day at work. Where's Mavin? And then the next thing I know, for 30 minutes to an hour, they would be on the phone. So I started noticing a pattern after about a year. <laughs> I said, Mom, how come you talk to Mavlin more than you talk to me? I'm your son. She said, because you don't have much to talk about. <laughs> so, so mothers are caring and loving, but I'll never forget that, and we love you, Mom. She endures, she sustains, she never gives up. A mother's love is unquenchable. It keeps pouring out, and it runs like a mighty river. However, mothers are more than just this woman who takes care of a home. Amen, somebody. Or just raises a child while the man works or handles the affairs of only the household. Mothers have much more capacity and have led in our society once we have given them an equal chance. Once we have opened the doors of equality, the women's suffrage movement, which was the women's right to vote, that the woman is not less than a man, but equal with a man, and has the same rights of freedom and liberty in the pursuit of happiness. Can somebody say amen? amen. So a woman... You are diverse. Yes, you are the nurturer, mothers. Yes, you take care of the home, but you're more than that. You are also leaders in our society, leaders in our community, presidents and executives and lawyers. In fact, this weekend, Madeline showed me two of our cousins, one on my side, one on her side. My cousin just became a pharmacist. Her cousin just became a medical doctor. Amen, somebody. It's a different world. When we allow our mothers, our women, to reach their full capacity and not hold them back. And it is what our scripture deals with today in that our mothers are definitely uh, uh, instrumental in building our faith. I know my mom was instrumental in building my faith. Uh, let's look at Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 1 and 2. It says, then he came to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lystra in Iconium. And so as we understand this, this was Timothy. And this is referring to Eunice and Lois. Now, they were distinguished women. And when Paul was on his missionary journeys, it is believed that Eunice was converted under Paul. Even though she was teaching, she understood she was a faithful Jewish woman, she needed the gospel message. And Lois also, uh, Timothy's grandmother, also came to faith. And what that did is that allowed them to raise Timothy in a household of faith. And, and, and that's what I want to talk to you about. I want to explore Eunice. It's only a few verses in, in the Bible about Eunice and Lois. But what Paul says about her is so significant that we cannot just gloss over it on this Mother's Day. And number one, I want you to write this down in your word or in your notes, is that we must believe the word. Everyone say, believe the word. Believe the word. And go back to 2 Timothy 1 and 5. I am reminded of your sincere faith. See, faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. Paul was writing to Timothy 
to encourage him because Timothy was discouraged by what he was dealing with. Paul encouraged Timothy by reminding him of who he was. He reminded him of his faith. Everyone say faith. Faith. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. He says, Timothy, my dear son, mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience at night and day. I constantly remember you in my prayers. Why was Paul praying for Timothy? Because Timothy, just as Paul was persecuted in Derby, Timothy was also being persecuted. And so he says, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. So Timothy was going through a tough time. Timothy was being attacked for the gospel message he was representing and he was presenting. Sounds like some of us sometimes, amen, somebody. And that the first thing is that we have to understand is that we are all going to have tough times. We are all going to struggle at one point or another in our lives. Timothy being an evangelist, Timothy being a person of faith, a man of God, still went through tough times. And I know I have some witnesses in here that even your pastor have some tough times. Even every minister, every person of the gospel, no matter how much we try to believe God or trust in God, we still go through some tough times. Oh, I know I'm in the house today. And, and so, because I don't want you to think that we walk on water because we are ministers of the gospel. But see, even when we're going through it, there's only one thing that can sustain us. And that is to believe, everyone say, believe the word. And how do I believe the word? To believe means to have faith. And so the first thing about leaving a legacy uh, as a mother is the mother imparts faith and the mother herself must be a believer. You can't encourage your children, mothers, unless you too are a believer. Come on, amen, somebody. That means you can't just drop them off at the church and tell them, I'm going to pick you up after Sunday school. I know I'm talking to somebody online right now. (laughs) You cannot do that. We must bring them in a church. We must nurture them. We too must grow in our own faith. Amen, somebody. Because faith cannot be pretended. That's why Paul says, because of your sincere faith. Another translation said genuine faith. This means without hypocrisy. This is the kind of faith we need in our mothers today. In fact, we need it in all of us today to not be hypocritical in our faith. Children learn, mothers, hear me out. Children learn by what they see. Children learn by what they hear. If, you, you, if you're cursing in your home and then you say, I don't know where they got that from. <laughs> if you're looking at anything on your TV, you have for your children, you say, I don't know how they learned that. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> you, you, you and I, we set the examples. And that's why sometimes, look, I, I've been, you know, just going through or whatever, and, and Robert Prince, this is what I love, because he hears the word, he sees the word, and he'll say it to me, he'll say, he'll make a way out of the blue, Bishop. I don't know where it came from, Mother Myrtle, but he'll say, he'll make a way. 
And you know why? Because that's what we play. He hears the gospel. He hears songs that uplift. But if you're letting this hard rap just permeate on your speakers and calling women's B's and H's and, you know, I don't curse, and calling women all these negative things and calling them an N-word, you need to change it right now. Change your culture right now. Oh, I got some young people smiling in here right now because they know exactly I'm telling the truth. And we need to change a culture. You can't let your children listen to anything if you're going to build a legacy of faith. Oh, my God. See, there is a significance in Eunice's name. Eunice's name, Eunice's name means a conquering well. Eunice was a highly popular name in the Greek world, but it, 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 it really applies to what God would use her to do. A conquering well. That means she was not one given to fear. Her name represents one who would go forward, one who would not uh, run out of endurance. A well giving water, giving life, constantly flowing. And mothers, that's what you are to us. We need our mothers. Can y'all just say that with me? We need our mothers. Mothers, we don't, we, we, we want to, you really want you to teach us because we can't learn to love like no one else except from a mother's love on this earth. A mother's love is what got me to where I'm at. A mother's nurture is what got me to being the caring man I am today. And so, so, so that faith of Lois, the grandmother. Somebody say, I had a praying grandmother. Ah, and the faith of Eunice was now what? Imparted to Timothy. See, look, look what it says. Paul writes to Timothy, reminding him of the treatment he endured in Lystra. He says this in 2 Timothy 3 and 11, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch? Um, Iconium, Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. And let me tell you, church, whatever you're going through today, not just our mothers, but our brothers and all we got to know that God will rescue you from all of your trouble. All we got to do is trust in the Lord. He's still, Brother Parrish, a rescuer. He's still the way out of Norway. He's still the bomb in Gilead. And he sent you mothers into our lives to make a difference. Because mothers, you are critical to the lives of nurturing us, our children, just as Eunice, just as mother, many mothers should do the same. And that is in part the faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so, so Eunice somehow spent time married to a Greek man who was not named. Eunice was able to teach the word through faith. And that's the second thing I want you to write down, is that without the faith, we cannot do it, but we must also learn to be taught. So teach the word. Everyone shout it with me. Teach the word. We got to believe the word. But number two, we got to teach the word. It says in 2 Timothy 3, flip over a little bit to 14 and 15. It says, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and what ha and have become convinced of because you know these things from whom, everyone say whom, whom, you learned it. And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Now, y'all know I like to dig in these things and dig in the word. And so here it is that Timothy is being encouraged by Paul and telling him, you got to go back to the foundation that you got from your mother. Mm. You got to go back to the times of your infancy 
when she poured into you and your grandmother poured into you. See, mothers, if we are going to leave a legacy of faith, we have to take responsibility and teach the word. Everybody say amen right there. You cannot depend on the church to teach the word. The church needs to teach the word, but the most influential person in a child's life are his parents. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And with that, the mother, in this case, Eunice and Lois, were the lead teachers of the word. I don't hear the Greek father's name mentioned. When the Bible leaves your name out, it's for a reason. It means you did not have any significance. But I, I, I'm not putting him down. I'm not putting him down. But he might have been like some of us men, an absentee father. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like he believed. He may have had some faith, but he was sitting on the sideline. Some of us men, you believe, you trust in God, but you're sitting on the sideline. God says, get up off the sideline, man, and take your rightful place. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Men, don't get mad at me. Don't write me because I'm telling you the truth. We're in a Bible study called the resolution of the man and how we must take care of our family, how we must get alongside and not keep depending on the mothers alone to do all of the nurturing, to do all of the caring, to do all of the teaching. We need to get involved as well, men. Somebody say amen. amen. And so this is what's going on, is that the significant role in this household was Eunice and Lois. We don't know by scripture whether the Greek father was a believer. It appears he was. It appears he was. I looked at other references. It appears he was. But he certainly was not the one that Paul noticed who imparted the faith into Timothy. I'm just giving you the word. Amen, somebody. It was the mother who imparted the faith. It was the mother who taught him from infancy. And so I remember me and Malin teaching little Ashley, who didn't Ashley sing well today? I forgot to recognize Lachelle and Ashley. Didn't they do a great job? And wait a minute. And didn't Mubarak do a great job? Amen, somebody. Thank you, Mubarak. Thank you, Ashley and Lachelle. But, you know, Ashley has been singing the gospel message since she was little. Y'all didn't know that, did you? Mm -hmm. Even though if you go get her album, it doesn't have any gospel songs on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ashley, I'm calling you out. Where she's at? Right there. There she is. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's nice. It's nice. It's talking about love. It's talking about you broke my heart and all of that kind of stuff. But I'm like, Ashley, at least put one gospel song. Your dad is a preacher after all. <laughs> Say something. Ashley used to sing, I've heard the joyful sound. Jesus says. Jesus says, you remember that, Ashley? That was the only song she sang when she was little. But why did she sing it? Because she had a nurturing mother. She had a mother who poured into her, and she saw Madeline, who was the choir director, who was the praise leader, who was singing in church, who sang around countries. She saw Madeline singing. She says, I want to be just like my mom. And she got that mic when she was like two years old, and she started singing like Madeline. Come on, give Madeline and Ashley a round of applause. A nurturing family. See, she dedicated time and effort to educate her son, Eunice did, about the scripture and live according to God's will. And that means Eunice, as I said earlier, had to have faith herself. She had to believe the word in order to impart the word. Can I encourage you mothers, if you don't believe the word, to start believing the word so you can teach the word. 
And, and so, so Eunice was a strong woman of faith, not deterred by the obstacles of the time. And Timothy's uh, mother, Eunice, and his grandmother, Lois, they must have lived lives that stood out to Paul, a missionary who had traveled the whole Asia Minor region three, four times. And yet these individuals stood out to him because they were faithful mothers. Amen, somebody. And if we can learn one thing, from the record of Timothy and his mother Eunice, it is that teaching children at an early age will educate them in the word of God. And we know from scripture that God's word will certainly not be void or without effect on the hearer of the word and the reader of the word. But can I pause right here, Brother Alex and Evelyn? Too many children do not live in a faith-filled home children as Timothy did. Parents, you have to teach your children. J.R.W. Stott writes, anyone who has been born and bred in a Christian home has received from God a blessing beyond price. In other words, the teaching that a mother gives, the teaching that a father gives will go so far in life we cannot even imagine. But it takes faith. In times like these, somebody say amen. Oh, Lord, you know I got to bring it and make it real. Uh, from Eunice, we learned that parenting requires daring, determination, to teach in the times when Christians were persecuted, to teach in a time where being a Christian, you could have you been ostracized and put out, but, but she kept the faith. She converted and she believed. But you know, today, our mothers are facing an, a, a battle that seems impossible. Come on, somebody. And we got, to, we got to deal with this because there's an influence of the world right now. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Our children are being pulled every direction. Mothers and fathers are the most powerful influence on our children up to age 10. But then, my friends, once you have not put anything in them, if you didn't put it in them before age 10, they're going to go everywhere after the age of 10. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you read in Chicago, if you read in my hometown of New Orleans, 12, 13 years old, shooting people, robbing people, killing mothers, don't care, don't have any upbringing because they did not get the word. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. I know it's not the only answer, but it is an answer. See, our children are being exposed to things well, well beyond their years. They are lured away on the internet. They're lured away on their devices, social media. Uh, Facebook is passe to the youth. All they do is TikTok. I don't even know how TikTok works. Every time it asks me to subscribe, I say no. I, but maybe I need to catch up with what TikTok is doing. Because they say no, because it's influencing our youth. Amen, somebody. The music we listen to. Uh, the schools have changed. Uh, colleges have changed. No offense, Mr. President. Universities are changing. Everything is being influenced. And guess who's being pushed out? God. Faith is being pushed to the side. Telling us that we don't have the right to believe in what we believe telling us that we cannot teach the values of a man and a woman. Oh, no. We got to teach you that it's transgender. We got to teach you that it's same sex. We got to teach you uh, that they're teaching our children how to do things I won't even mention over the pulpit at young ages. That's why my vision for Highland Haven Academy is coming to fruition because we got to educate our children. I'm not depending on the world to put all their worldly teachings inside of them. 
our children come home and, and the parents talk to me. They said, Pastor, I told the teachers I'm not going to let my children be in their sex education class. Because it's not just teaching them the body parts. It's teaching them all kinds of other things and that, that we don't want our children to be exposed to. Oh, yes, the exposure of the world. is. I hope I'm not stepping on too many toes. But our children are dying in the streets. Oh, there are shootings and stabbings every day. We, we got to get upset about it. My daughter, who's in New Orleans, a dental hygienist, she told me, Dad, she said, there's a new thing. She says, when you pull up to the gas station, they'll come in a gas, these young men of African descent, they will come into you and they will rip you out of your car. They drag one woman. They don't have a conscience. They don't have the word of God. They don't have the church. They need Jesus. Hallelujah. Am I the only one upset about it? They need Jesus. And we have to do everything we can. Mothers join with our mothers to spread the word because our children are being lured into gang. Why? Because they tell them, you got a kinship here. You got friendship here. So now I'm going to lure you into the gang where you can feel a part of something. I got news for the gang members. If you just try Jesus, you will really feel a part of something. Jesus has the answers. Listening to that hard rap, I know, don't get in your car after leaving church. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. My end, my end, my end. That B, that B. Stop it! <laughs> I'm serious about it. We got to have standards in our homes. Standards that our children are exposed to. Our children need us. Not only are they dealing with uh, 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 pressure, they're dealing with depression, they're dealing with anxiety, uh, they're dealing with confusion. And when Dr. Joseph gets them at the, uh, at the university level, he still has to pick up the pieces because of all of the trauma of their whole lives. Hallelujah, somebody. Many of them turn to suicide. Did you know there was a time that an African-American young child would never think of suicide hardly? But today, it's rising on a rapid pace. We got to figure this out, my friends. Not only we're we shooting each other in the street, but we are also getting so bullied in school that we are now letting our kids go to a point of suicide. And so, so, so the church, somebody say it with me, the church needs to rise up. Yeah. Say it like this. Mothers, Mothers rise up. Rise. Fathers, Mothers. rise up. Mothers. It's time for us to get involved. And I don't care if you call me a strict parent. Oh, you can't hold them back. Yes, I can. And I'm going to teach them the word of God. I'm going to teach them what it is to believe in Jesus. And our children need us today. So Eunice was a living example to Timothy and her family a perseverance, faithfulness, trust in God's sovereignty. But the, but the influence for her son began at a young age. Proverbs 22 and 6 says that start a child off in the way they should go, and even when they're old. They shall not depart from it. Let me tell you, they might go into drugs. They might go into the streets. They might not go to church when they're adults. But I guarantee you, if you put the word in them when they were young, the word, it's in them. The word is powerful. The word is, is, is like a two, a double-edged sword, cutting to the bone, the marrow, and even the sunder. Hallelujah. We have to, we have to teach the word. The way a child starts with scripture from early age, Timothy was exposed to the scripture. That's why our children are suffering today because we don't have a Sunday school. Mm -hmm. But thank God for Minister Lisa Brooks and the teachers who come together, eight, 10 volunteers to reach our youth every Sunday 
every Wednesday without fail. Why? Because they're teaching. They're coming alongside of the parents. They're not supposed to be the parents, but they're coming alongside of the parents. Hallelujah, somebody. Eunice's persistence, and I'm wrapping it up, in exposing her son to Scripture was not wasted. God promises his word will accomplish what it purpose. As I said in Isaiah 55 and 11, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Can I encourage somebody today that the word that God has put in us is not going to return void. And don't give up on the word of God. It is in the word of God, parents, that we find our strength. It is in the word of God, mothers, that you will leave a legacy of faith. And so I'm going to wrap it up this way. Not only did Eunice uh, believe the word with Lois, but she taught the word. But number three, she caused the word to spread. Somebody say spread the word. We got to tell somebody that Jesus is who he said he is. Look at 2 Timothy 3, 6, and uh, 8. It says, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. We got to flame the fan. Somebody say, fan into flame. Fan into flame, not flame the fan, but fan into flame. The Lord's power, the gift of God. And so this is what he says in verse 7. For the spirit God has given us does not make us fearful or timid, but he gives us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And so do not, here it is, be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or me, in his, his prisoner, R rather join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. You see, because of the faith of Eunice, the faith of Lois, the legacy of faith continued through Timothy. Timothy was able to spread the gospel, travel with Paul. He's mentioned in seven of the 16 epistles written by Paul. He was able to spread the word because of the faith. Somebody say the faith that his mother demonstrated. The faith that his mother poured into him. And so Paul tells him, don't get discouraged. Can you look at your neighbor right now, especially a mother? Look at a mother and say, don't get discouraged. Come on, at home, can you just say it to yourself, don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Yes, the world is raging out of control. Our children are being attacked on every hand, but God is still in control. God is still the one on the throne. The Bible says he has saved us. He called us to a holy life in verse 9, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Somebody say he saved us. He called us. And God has called you and I to be a witness for him. He's called you and I to spread the gospel as Timothy spread the gospel that was taught by his mother Eunice. And I got news for you today. He became so important to Paul in the church. Paul called him my son. The church recognized him, his beloved son. And that was in 1 Corinthians 4 and 17. Paul says, my own son in the faith. 1 Timothy 1 and 2. He was young, 1 Timothy 4 and 12, but yet he believed. And this is the, the message I want to leave with you today, is that you and I, 
We have to be the imparters of faith. You and I, we have to be the deliverers to our children of faith. We have to be the ones who are saying, I don't care what the world is saying. I don't care what people are saying. I don't care what the lure of the internet is. We will teach our children faith. Somebody say, I will teach my child faith. I will teach them to believe in the word of God. I will teach them to trust in God because this is what you're going to face today. By faith, we will be able to overcome the world. Somebody say it's by faith. It's by my faith that I am able to make it through the storms. It's by my faith that I'm able to speak to mountains and see the change happen. It's by my faith. But if I don't have faith, I cannot please God. Amen, somebody. Say it with me. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But how do I get my faith as a child? I get it from you mothers. I get it from you fathers. I get it from the church who imparts faith into my life. And so today I made up my mind, Highland Christian Center, we will be a faith teaching church. We will be a church that pours into our children. When we start Highland Haven Daycare, when we start Highland Haven Academy, while we might not get them to open the Bible and read it verse for verse, but we're going to tell them about faith. We're going to tell them about God's goodness. And today, what we need to do in our household, make up your mind today that you make a pledge today at home, on TV, on the Internet, wherever you're at, make a pledge today and say, I will. Say it with me. I will. Teach faith to my children. Come on, everyone stands right now and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. We got to be a church that spreads the gospel message. We got to be a church that spreads the faith of the Lord. And how do we do it, church? How do we do it? We don't do it by ourselves. We don't do it uh, independently. But we get together with other believers and we find out how they're teaching their children, how they're pouring into our children. We make up our mind. We set a pattern in our household. We say, listen, today we're not going to just watch TV. We're not just going to go to the games. We're not just going to go to the field. But today we're going to study the word. Set a day. Set a time to say every week we're going to set time with our children and we're going to pour into their lives to spread the gospel of God and give them faith. Somebody say give them faith in the midst of all of this trouble and in the midst of this world. See, this is what it is, church. We can't just hear the word and be excited, but we must live the word. We must live a holy life. And so as we get ready to leave this place, but not the presence of the Lord, I just want to say we love you, mothers. We encourage you and we thank you for viewing us today on the Internet. We thank you for viewing us here in the place or being a part of our worship in the place today. And so today, every mother... What I want you to do, and you bring your husband, bring your loved one. I just want you to come across this altar. We're going to pray a special prayer for every mother right now. Every mother, come on, in the balcony, and we're going to dismiss right from here. We want to give a blessing to our mothers. We want to thank you. Look at them. Here they come. Hallelujah. God bless you mothers today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Look at, look at that. Come on, mothers. We honor you today, mothers. Now look, while you're making your way, there might be some who don't know Jesus Christ in a pardoning of your sins. You don't have a relationship with Jesus, but you're wondering, Lord, can I have a relationship with you? 
Listen, today was Baptism Sunday. You know we baptize every month. But I got a call that some did not want to be baptized on Mother's Day. For me, man, I've been like, hey, that's the day. I will remember that day I got baptized because right now I can't tell you when I got baptized. However, however, I told the deacons. Now, listen, I'm serious about this. I said, don't empty the pool. I said, because if somebody wants to get baptized today, we're going to do it. I'm going to back whether the people stay or not. I'm going to baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Maybe today you want to join Highland Christian Center. Maybe today you're saying, I want to make this my church home. But most importantly, I encourage you to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. And so what we're going to do, I'm going to pray with you right now. With every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm going to pray the prayer of salvation first. And then I will pray over those mothers. And then we will enjoy our praise team. Lord, we thank you right now for your word, your truth. Father, every person in this room. Every person looking by the internet, viewing by the internet, or viewing by TV on delay. Father, we thank you for them, and we thank you for their household. We pray your blessing over those households. Father, we pray right now, if there's someone at the sound of my voice who doesn't know you in the pardoning of their sins, that they would say, what must I do to be saved? If there is someone today who are saying, I hear Jesus calling me. I want you to slip your hand above your head, whether you're at the altar or in your seat. If you're making a declaration for Jesus Christ, I want you to put your hand up high and say, Jesus, I invite you into my life. I repent of my sins. I turn away from unrighteousness. The second thing I would like you to do, if you receive Jesus Christ, I want you to say, if I want to be baptized, even today, I want to be baptized. I want you to raise your hand right where you stand, right where you stand. At home, just type it in. I want to be baptized. I want to be saved. If you're in this place, just raise your hand above your head today. If you're saying, I want to be baptized. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then the last call is if you want to make Highland Christian Center your church home. If you're saying this is the place that I want to call home and I want to worship, I want to be a part of this team, I want you to slip up your hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. At home, just type, I want to become a member of Highland Christian Center. Well, we thank the Lord. Do I see any hands I can't necessarily see because of the lights? But if you just raise your hand high so I can see, if you made one of those three declarations today, to be saved, to be baptized, or to join Highland Christian Center. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 We thank the Lord. Now I want to pray over all of the mothers in this place right now. Lord, I thank you for every mother in this place. And today, Lord, even as we anoint them with oil, God, we ask your blessings upon them. We thank you, God, for touching them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we anoint every mother today, God, that you would keep them and that you will bless them, and that you will guide them. Lord, that you will be a hedge around them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, we love you and we praise you today. Thank you, Lord, for the mothers who are able to come today and be a part of our service. So now, Lord, we ask that you would anoint them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, In the name of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you.
for every mother here today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Come on, church, help me to pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't realize there were so many mothers here today. Amen. Hallelujah. My timing is off. Thank you, Father. We anoint them, though, Lord. We trust in your word. We anoint them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. God, give them wisdom from on high. Bless them, Lord. Keep them in every way they go. Order their steps, Lord. Guide them. Heal their bodies. We pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for healing. We know God is a healer. God is able to do it. Lord, we thank you for working the miracles right now. We bless. We bless every mother. We bless every mother in the name of the Father, in the Son, in the Holy Spirit. Strengthen right now. Strengthen right now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray for strength. We pray for God's anointing. We pray for God's touch on your life. We pray right now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, that you would keep them, Lord. God bless you, God, all the way from Louisiana. God bless you. We anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We anoint you right now. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of the Father. Hey, hallelujah. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we pray a blessing upon them. Keep them, Lord. These are your mothers. These are your daughters. And we anoint them in faith today. We anoint them in faith today. Am I getting all the mothers? If you're a mother, let me know right here, because I'll tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. We anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wow. You look beautiful today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We anoint you. We anoint you. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on. Yes, yes, sing it. I worship you. In the name of the Father, I the Son. I worship you, are here. In the name of the Father, the Son, Every and the Holy Spirit. I worship you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I worship you. Yes, yes. God bless you. Hallelujah. That is who you are. Amen. We thank you for coming this Mother's Day. You are dismissed. There will be no Sunday night service. We will see you next week for Men's Day. We have a guest speaker, Pastor Mark Strong. We will see you next week for Men's Day. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day.